Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something you on Twitter, The Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming at you with a demo for a new Let's Play furry visual novel called Coffee Buns. This is by the same people who did um, Mice Tea. I think the, the I think the group is called Cinnamon Switch. I think that might be what they're called. I, I keep forgetting. Um, but yeah, y'all, this looks interesting. I love character art. Yeah, character art looks great. <laughs> So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. What the hell am I trying to load? Okay. Day 999, my god. Starting off on the other end of that spectrum, aren't we? Oh, okay, day one. I know this apparently takes place after the events of the first game, so. It's been, it's been two years since Kimono Tea was unveiled to the world. New Greenshire was one of the first cities in the U.S. to gain access to the magical tea, which had the power to turn people into animalistic versions of themselves. Though availability is still limited, its effects are beginning to manifest across society. Human civilization is still coming to grips with the ramifications for how such a powerful entity will shape culture in the future of what was once mankind. Aw, oh, this is adorable. So, wait. Okay, he's the barista. She's the customer. Okay. So you shouldn't pull units for... Put, shouldn't pull for units unless you have enough for ten for a tenfold. And even then you want to save your crystals until the last day of the next limited event when the meta's going to be refined. I want to... No. I, I want to date her. I want to date her. I, I, I love everything she just said. Maybe. Maybe we'll see. The daily deal... Oh. Uh... Are you talking about Final Fantasy XIV? I think so. The daily deal is only worth it if you spend premium currency. It'll build your pity rate. If your pity and you, if you aren't lucky enough to pull a five star, you'll still get a steady supply of garbage, garbage units to turn into stardust. Uh huh. But you gotta remember, do not feed your garbage units to your party for XP. Stardust is finite, while XP is not. It's also the only way to obtain a power print, which are invaluable, ch invaluable equips. I'd say save up to about fifty thousand in stardust and keep it in reserve in case a new limited print drops. Personally, I've got like two hundred thousand saved up for the New Year's event. That makes sense. Anyways, I'm, used to, I'm using a cheese strat right now that takes advantage of one unit's counter damage and another's unbalanced buff rate. It'll probably be patched out soon, and I'm, but I'm farming enough, but I'm farming high demon orbs. I need to grab them while I can so I can buy the new six-star water sword. I'm missing the right support unit for the raid, though. It's a less consistent auto, but at least it's about 80. It's about an 80% clear rate. Um, excuse me, ma'am. Did you have anything pressing to relate to our associate here? Oh no, I guess we were just talking about. Then I'll kindly ask you to provide your order to Mr. Bianco so we can expedite things for other customers. Oh, um, yeah, can I get a large blended caramel mocha to go? I tap the order into the tablet. He's cute. I love her hair. She's a- I fucking love her outfit. I tap the order into the tablet. That'll be six ninety-five. A few char a few charms dangle from the phone case she taps on the card card reader. I assume they're from the game she was talking about. Sort of Final Fantasy, it's called Beginner's Re Beginning Reality? <laughs> Starting Reality? I don't know. My boss isn't taller than me, but it still feels like she looms over. Yeah, about the same point. Looms over my shoulders as she watches the tiny wolf fret over how much tip to add. Thanks for the tip, and we'll have your drink out for you soon. She nods and pulls out her phone as she continues her quest for more dragon orbs. I remain facing ahead as though there's someone next in line. There isn't. I hold, out, I hold out hope that someone might walk in the front door and appreciate my ready attention, but there's no such luck. Sighing, I turn around to see what the absence of heels clacking back to the office already told me. Hey, boss, I... Mr. Bianco, I know we're very passionate about providing a friendly, welcoming atmosphere here, but really, that was a prime opportunity to cut a conversation short. It's fine, she just wanted someone to talk to and there wasn't any line. Oh, goth cyberpunk girl is here, okay. Ash takes the effort to clean to lean in closer to our conversation as she steams milk for a cappuccino. Yeah, Bean, why aren't you helping me at the drink station, huh? I'm just buying you some time before I make the mocha. You sure you don't want me to handle that one? Sounds like you're having fun gossiping with your friends. Nope, really, getting started on that mocha right now. I grab the closest porta filter and rinse it under some hot water before placing it under the grinder. You sure about that? I could help you with the caramel swirls if you need. Nope, totally fine. Because when it comes to swirls, I know you... Mr. Bianco's swirls are the best this cafe has to offer. Ash affects an affronted frown. Ash affects an affronted frown. Huh. Quite a sentence there. Ash, the truth comes... 
Wow, the truth comes out, I guess. So I can entrust the store to you two while I take care of some phone calls? Ash returns to preparing her drink, and I press down on the grounds of my tamper. Uh, sure. Me and Bean have things all covered, don't we? Yep, all good. She stands there, wondering if there's any more man managerial guidance she's justified in providing. Then I will leave awakenings in your capable hands. I don't even have to look up to hear her footsteps fade into the back room as I tighten a port of the porta filter on the group head. The espresso machine buzzes as I wait for it to produce a shot. She's right, though. I do make better swirls. Ash clanks the pitcher of milk on the counter. Be set on all sides today. Candace, order's ready. A woman approaches and grabs her drink. She rushes a goodbye from her lips and herself out the door, leaving me, Ash, the wolf, and an older man pecking at a laptop as the only people present. <sighs> I keep an ear towards the door as I pour the espresso into a blender with milk, chocolate sauce, and a brisk pump of caramel syrup. If today's anything, the la if today's anything like the last few, I don't need to bother. The pre-work rush of commuters you'd hope to frequent a coffee shop has dried up in a have dried up to a trickle. It's forced Ash and I to get creative in finding ways to look busy during downtime. The whirring of the blender can't quite overpower a click clacking of footsteps since distinct from my bosses. Or rather, hoofsteps. Oh god, she's adorable! Morning, Leo! Got your order here. Hey Naomi, you can set them over next to Ash. She's not doing anything right now. She could shoot me a dirtier look if she wanted to, but she knows it's the truth. Naomi drops off three boxes of pastries on the counter. First day of the reduced order for you. Yeah, thanks. Hopefully we don't have too much excess now. I don't know, the free unsold pastries are probably the second best thing about working at the cafe. Thank you, Neil. Nice looking swirls, by the way. I turn behind me as I take a break from, a metic from meticulously applying a spiral of caramel to the interior of a takeout cup. Ash rolls her eyes and lets her wrists her wrists flop dramatically at either side. You got a floor shift today? Nah, just deliveries today. I should be able to make drinks tonight with you and Roman. I'd have forgotten the plan to head to Roman's place of work and see how much we could get away with distracting him from his customers who aren't his friends. Like all social obligations, I put more than a little thought into how much I could get away with, with heading home instead. I'm feeling more sociable than usual, so I'm almost positive I'll go. Yeah, I should be able to see you there. Any more deliveries after us? Nope. Hope you don't mind me bringing yours last. I look around at the nearly empty shop as I top the mocha with whipped cream. I think we'll manage. Maku, order's ready. The wolf shuffles out over without lifting her eyes from her phone and grabs her drink before heading out the door. Actually, I came here last because I have something to tell your boss. Is she available right now? Oh, she's taking some phone calls right now. Oh, I'll just wait here then. No need. She cups her hands over her mouth. Boss, someone wants to talk to you! I'm on the phone, Miss Blumenthal. It's Naomi. A chair scrapes along the floor, and papers flutter out of, out of a folder of the boss's it, as the boss emerges from the back room, smoothing out her sweater and hair. Oh, yes, Miss Reeves. Thank you for coming to see me. My pleasure. If you wouldn't mind accompanying me to my office so we could con discuss continue discussing the matter we were discussing. Yeah, of course. Are they? Discussing things? Are they? Really? Are they really discussing things? Their clacks mingle together as they disappear into the back office. Ash and I turn toward each other with matching raised eyebrows. What was that about? Beats me. You don't know? You don't... She's your friend. She hasn't mentioned one thing to me. She turns toward the office and scratches near the piercing in her eyebrow at the back of her thumb. Is she gonna hire Naomi or something? I sort of doubt we're in much of a position to hire new baristas. Plus, I can't imagine her dropping her current job. <laughs> Well, that's a relief. Relief? What do you mean, relief? I really don't think I need to have her as a co-worker. Whoa! Nao hey, Naomi's nice! Yeah, exactly, she's... She narrows her eyes at the muffled conversation leaking through the walls. Chipper. Uh, she says it like Naomi showed up to a wedding in white. Yeah, she's got a positive attitude. I could use some of that. Just don't spend all your time talking about your schoolyard crushes if she gets hired here. That won't be an issue. God, she's adorable. We hear the door open and Naomi clop her way out. Hey, gotta get back to the bistro, but I'll see you two later, okay? Really excited to share what we were talking about. She shakes, her, she shakes little elated fists in front of her while her literal doe eyes sparkle with excitement. I don't have time to respond before she's already on the sidewalk. Ash gestures towards the door as if to rest her case. I sigh and unscrew the top of the creamer pitchers at the, ca at the pickup counter to check their levels. I'm just as full as the last time I checked, but I have to keep myself busy somehow. 
This only trickle of customers helps somewhat, but I keep finding myself dusting the tops of the espresso machine and scrubbing the inside of the sink. Cold brews sit awaiting the prospect prospective customers, and our cup sleeves maintain their unrivaled streak of remaining neatly straightened in their dispenser. Our decision to cut back on the pastries turns out to be the correct one, and we get to close we get close to selling out by the time we close. We actually sell more than we usually do. A paltry amount of pastries in the case probably does the case probably does a lot to convince customers to grab one before they completely exhausted. There's only three left for Ash and I to split as we approach closing time. I'm already whisking a splash of espresso into a few spoonfuls of sugar in anticipation of my typical last order of the day when Roman walks in. Leo, my man! He strides in and clanks down a mug that matches the one I'm still fervently stirring. Hey, Roman. Uh, Cordadito's not quite finished. Thanks. That's, that's just, that just makes it fresher once it's done. Ash grabs the mug he sets down and rolls her eyes before tossing into the sink with the rest of the end-of-the-day dishes. I put another splash of espresso in the mug and whisk again before pulling out the spoon out and then letting the mixture drip down to confirm the sugar is totally, totally dissolved. It's finally ready for the rest of the coffee, which I pour in and give a few gentle stirs. Am I going to see you tonight at Murph's? I steam the last milk of the day in a pitcher. Yeah, Naomi's coming too, remember? Roman leans back and stares past the menu board behind me. Oh, today is... He snaps the fingers on his left hand. The one with the prominent watch tan. Uh, Friday. Today's Friday. Yes, Friday. Right, right, right. Yeah, totally. I'll see you both at the bar. I pour the steamed milk into the mug, flung down to let the last fourth or so float to the top. I let the last few drops taper off in size to make a simple pattern on top and hand him the mug. Your usual, sir. He takes the mug and lifts it up. Salute, bro. He tilts back his first sip before lowering the mug and sucking a breath between his teeth. That's the stuff. He pulls out two dollar bills. One for the maestro. He puts one in the tip jar. And one for the ineffable Ash. He drops in the second bill. Ash doesn't look up from the dishes. Thanks, Roman. Don't let those bachelorette parties push you around. Not a chance. His tab will be tallied at the end of the month, so there's nothing more he has to do besides away from the exit. Hmm. Literally, literally drinking coffee while watching this. Or playing this. See you in a bit. I'll have your drink ready, bud. I wave back as the door closes behind him. When I turn around, Ash's face is already inches away from mine. You gonna go with your boyfriend? Jesus! And we're roommates! It's not the 60s. You don't have to say you're roommates. Unfortunately, I'm straight. And fortunately for the women of New Greenshire, so is Roman. He turns back to the dishes. Give it time. I sigh and roll up my sleeves a little more to join her, or join her at the sink. <laughs> She brushes me away. No, seriously, catch up with your little friends. I lean, uh, I lean up straight. Wait, you sure? Yeah, just leave me two of the pastries. The tea, the tea chips go in the... How de cajo? How de cajo? How de cajo. The generosity of her offer is the only thing preventing me from being disappointed. How de cajo is the best thing they serve at Naomi's place. Ah, uh, okay, if you're sure. Very sure, I'll tell boss. I pause, wondering if there's a second ulterior motive beyond the pastries. With unspringing to mind, I remove my apron and stick it on its peg. Okay, I'll uh, see you tomorrow. Sure, sure. I grab my bag and unplug my phone from the charger under the counter before heading out. There's no way she can see my wave as I pass through the door, but she tilts her head up as I do. It's still sunny outside as I step into the late afternoon air. There are a couple of bars that are closer and nicer than Murph and Murphy's, but it's the one one Roman works at, so it's rare. So I, go but it's the one Roman works at, so it's rare rare I go anywhere else. I have the luxury of time, so I take the more scenic route that passes by a few more shops, including Naomi's place of work. It's as busy as it always is. I'm gonna pause it right there, y'all. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm gonna give a quick shout out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank y'all for all I do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silvermoon. Thank you for a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our non-sci-fi war contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye